ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله واصحابه وازواجه امهات المؤمنين وعلى من اتبعهم باحسان الى يوم الدين My dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam I'm your host Karim Abu Zaid and I come live uh, from Denver uh, Colorado uh, with a very uh, special broadcast today uh, our uh, beloved uh, brother uh, I call him the Irish uh, Da'i uh, Da'iya the Irish caller to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, brother Abdul Rahim McCarthy uh, he's originally from Ireland and uh, alhamdulillah he's been uh, around for quite some times uh, inshallah uh, he is our special guest uh, special guest today for the broadcast and we're looking forward to having a good conversation with him inshallah as we invite everybody in inshallah into the uh, broadcast uh, like uh, we normally do uh, let's welcome the first 30 uh, comers uh, brother bilal uh, and we have uh, brother antonio from kuwait uh, sister Um Muhammad, uh, our dear sister Amina Shanley from Seattle, sister Caroline, those are all our leg- regular, uh, subhanAllah, I, I feel like you're my family now. MWM, I don't know who's that, but I know Abdul Qadir Al Albani, uh, our brother from Malaysia, uh, Aruli, uh, Bunani, Assalamu Alaikum, all of those say Assalamu Alaikum and Ramadan Mubarak to all of you. Uh, Yasin Muhammad, Amaniya, uh, Hamard, uh, Ashraf uh, Saleh, uh, Tariq Abdul Wahid, Wali Amman, uh, Sister Emily uh, Anderson, uh, Steve Dawitson, uh, our brother Ismail, Hussein Ilmi, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, Wa Alaikum Salam, Tabarakatu, our brother from Chicago, Judah, Ali Hassan Khan, Hassan Ali, uh, our brother Hussein, uh, and uh, our brother Shuaib Dilwar, Salam Alaikum Shuaib, Wa Alaikum Salam, Tabarakatu, Abdul Rahim Yahya, Abdul Halim Yahya, I'm sorry, and we have Amaniya. Amaniya, Anita, uh, Mustafa Siraj, uh, and more. Those are the 30, inshallah. If we, if we get more, uh, few, inshallah, uh, we will add you to the list, bi uh, ta'ala. Brothers and sisters in Islam, uh, the theme is uh, Ramadan, and uh, what can we do uh, to revive uh, our spiritual uh, health uh, during this month, inshallah. Uh, so let me see if we can uh, invite uh, Sheikh uh, Abdul Rahim McCarthy in and uh, we will uh, start. Uh, please go ahead and post your questions uh, as soon as you can. Uh, we can actually post the questions right away. Uh, but allow uh, the Sheikh a couple of minutes just to introduce himself uh, and also give us a message, you know, uh, uh, ta'ala. So let me see if we can invite uh, Sheikh Abdul Rahim in and we are ready to go insha'Allah bi idnillahi ta'ala. We're calling him right now. Bi-idnillah. Assalamu alaikum Sheikh Abdul Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. How are you doing Sheikh Abdul Rahim? Good, alhamdulillah. Okay, let me just put you on the screen so everybody sees you. That's more important than anything else. Okay, yeah, right here, your life. Everybody sees that beautiful Irish smile. Abdul Rahim McCarthy and, uh, you know, uh, 
welcome to have you uh, in the U.S. all the way in the U.S.A. Abdul Rahim. Exactly. And I'm in, yeah. I'm in the middle of U.S.A. You know, in Denver, Denver is like in the middle spot of the country. You know, like a desert area. It's called Rocky I've, Mountain. Yeah, it's very beautiful there. Actually, I've only been there in the airport when I was younger. Inshallah, okay. very soon we'll uh, we'll have you here. Inshallah, we have uh, Dar al Tawheed here is your place. You know. Inshallah. Uh, when when was the last time I met you? Was it in uh, Saudi Arabia? In Mecca and Hajj. Mecca we were doing Hajj, yeah. both filming for Huda TV. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember that. Subhanallah, Subhanallah. How are you doing? How is your family? And how are you Good. building this uh, COVID nineteen business? Well, and yeah, for me, I'm 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 enjoying it. I must say, <laughs> staying home. <laughs> yeah, maybe I'm a bit different than other people. But gen generally speaking, I enjoy staying at home. Uh, I enjoy being with the family. I enjoy working online. So for me, it hasn't really been any a huge change. Any, uh, even like you know, working out and things like that. I have my own home gym. So I mean, it hasn't really till now. It hasn't really hit me personally too hard. You know, I mean, I, I miss maybe going out for walks and things like that. But uh, other than that, it's been uh, it's been good for me. Alhamdulillah. 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 So let's start from uh, the right place here. Uh, uh, somebody is writing, Welcome Abdul Rahman McCarthy. And subhanAllah, I was under the impression that you are Abdul Rahman. Uh, of course, both names, mashallah, are beautiful. And so are you Abdul Rahman or Abdul Rahim? Uh, I'm Abdul Rahim. My son is Abdul Rahman. MashaAllah. So I'm Abdul Rahman. <laughs> I'm Abdul Rahman. And, I, and I, I told him, and I said, MashaAllah, I said, you became famous. And before you had a chance, mashallah, because well, all my lectures, they call me Abdul Rahman. Eh? Yeah, 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 yeah. So it is Abdul Rahim uh, Shuaib, okay, not Abdul Rahman. Uh, unless if you want to call him uh, Abba Abdul Rahman, then that's another scenario here, inshallah. So uh, can you take a minute or so just uh, let us know who you are? And, you know, imagine people uh, who uh, maybe meet you in person, uh, of course, virtually. Uh, for the first time, just uh, your, your background, when you did you become a Muslim and and also, you know, uh, your quest for knowledge. I know that you, you, you're you heavily invested in uh, Kuwait somehow. I see you all the time there. <laughs> so tell me, what is the connection with Kuwait? <laughs> inshallah. Go ahead, inshallah. Yeah, um, alhamdulillah, I, I, I became Muslim. And actually, I'm, I'm Irish-American. And a lot, of, a lot of the things where it talks about... Uh, you know, it talks about me, it says, uh, there goes Abdul Rahim, alhamdulillah. Oh, it talks about, um, uh, you know, where I'm from on a lot of my, the flyers for posters when I give lectures around the world. Sometimes it says USA, sometimes it says um, uh, Ireland, uh, sometimes it says from Qatar, sometimes it says from Kuwait, sometimes it says from Turkey. I guess it's where I'm coming from in the world. Alhamdulillah, that's your kind of international. Yeah, alhamdulillah. But the, the, the origin, I'm uh, Irish-American. Obviously, you can see from McCarthy that my family comes from Ireland, but I was born and raised in America. Uh, I was born in Virginia, raised in Virginia. Um, why, and I became Muslim. Why did you come this yeah. way? What's that? What you were born because your family were here, or, or, or? Yeah, yeah. my my family they came from the ones who migrated from Ireland at different times. Uh, so, alhamdulillah, uh, I was I was born in my family originally from Boston from my father's side. Virginia from my from my mother's side. Oh, okay, and I was born and raised in uh, in Virginia, and I accepted Islam there in 1994. Allahu Akbar. That's so. You're not that old. Yeah. <laughs> uh, how, I mean, can we ask how old are you, or is that offensive to you? No, alhamdulillah. I'm, I'm 45 now. Alhamdulillah. I, oh. became Muslim. I became Muslim. when I was 18. Alhamdulillah. 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 So, and after that, you you traveled back to. The East? Yeah, so basically what happened um, is when I became Muslim, uh, I became infatuated and I came in love with the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I wanted to learn more and I decided, you know, this is what I want to do. I want to, you know, become like a student of knowledge or a scholar if I can, you know. So, but I, I realized quickly just being around the Muslims that the ones who truly accomplish that are the ones who travel abroad and travel overseas. And this is the era, you know, of, of, the, of the Salaf, of the early scholars. They would travel and seeking knowledge. So I stayed in America probably only six months after I became Muslim. And I traveled uh, to Sudan. I learned the basics there in Arabic and what have you. And then I moved on to uh, 
uh, Saudi Arabia. And I stayed there for 10 years, uh, or actually 11 years, uh, I stayed in Saudi Arabia. Uh, and then I, I was in other Gulf countries in Kuwait. I stayed a long time in the UAE as well. So that's why you see in, in Qatar as well. So you see, I had in all the Gulf countries, I spent uh, any, most of my life there, I guess, if you were to add it up. <laughs> yeah, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Uh, you yeah. have family, right? You, I mean, you're married and have... Uh, yeah, yeah, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. May Allah protect you, protect your family, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Uh, so, uh, Sheikh Abdul Rahim, uh, you know, uh, tell me, uh, how can we enjoy Ramadan at home? Um, you know, I spoke about this the other night, and actually I gave a lecture called The Beauty of Isolation. And, and generally speaking, a, a Muslim, you know, we attach ourselves to the Qur'an, and we always have to look at things with, you know, the, the glasses of the Qur'an. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala laid out for us in the Qur'an different qawaid principles, not just to tell us, but for us to actually make it part of our lives. You know, when, we, when, we, when, when something happens to us, we're in a situation that that principle comes to our mind and we act upon that principle. So, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in Surah Al-Baqarah, wa asan takrahu shayan wa huwa khayru no. No. We, to, we, we always have to keep that in our mind. Uh, that the fact that we dislike something right now, we think it's bad for us. But Allah tells us, well, that it's actually good for you. And um, even in, in Surah An-Nisa, uh, no. and, if, and if you look at these ayat, the, the one in Surah Al-Baqarah is talking about fighting. Allah said, well, it's something you dislike for you. And the verses in Surah, um, in Surah An-Nisa talk about you know, marital problems. Your wife. Yeah, all, all, of, all, <laughs> Talks about your all, these, all of these problems you're facing, you know, difficulties, so, so right? So actually, then, you, you, yeah. brought, you brought it up, you may dislike being with your spouse, but there is good that yeah. could come out of it. Why don't you just... Khayran kathiran, kaman yani, not just... Yeah, <laughs> just <you know. laughs> Alhamdulillah, we have to look at the positive, you know, and then the... Um, the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, عَجَبًا لِأَمْرِ الْمُؤْمِنِ Naam. How wonderful is the affair of the believer. So alhamdulillah, we have to look at it in a positive light. Where can we gain the positive from it? You know, it's, actually, it's very difficult to think about it. We're so used to being in the masajid. We're so used to having you know, the iftar jama'i. And I always tell people when they travel around the world and they say, where is the best Ramadan that you spent? And I tell them, in America. Like in America, how can that be? Because I spent Ramadan in Mecca, both yeah. countries. Yeah. You know, in America and the West in general, I found out that the community and how they come together, and it's really, really beautiful there. You know, during Ramadan. So the and, and, and most countries around the world, it's like that. So you'll find that the fact, subhanAllah, now that's been taken from us, and the Tarawih has been taken from us. You know, it's very, very difficult for us to handle. But there's also a lot of good in it as well. If you want to look at it in a positive light, coming closer to our families. Uh, now we have we have to become imams in our house. Yeah, we have to lead prayer So we have to make sure that we're on point with our Quran and our recitation uh, Our dua and all of this Some that we're, we're benefiting a lot from it. Alhamdulillah. We just have to look at in the positive I can see where is where is the good in it? Uh, Abdul Rahim, uh, Sheikh Abdul Rahim, can I ask you a, a question, but I really want your gut feeling answer Yeah, you know, I, I'm really beginning to develop that uh, you know, uh, tendency towards the conspiracy theories regarding this COVID-19. Uh, you know, I, I recall these uh, uh, pictures, which, you know, I used to watch during Jahiliya time, uh, where they, they place a, a chip in the head of the individual, you know, and, and he's like, he has no other, you know, nothing that would distract him from Imagine how they are controlling us now. Everybody is sitting. The whole population is being controlled. It's exactly like this chip. Walk, walk with a with a mask. Uh, uh, are you into this? <laughs> are you into this? I mean, I, I'm sorry. I mean, you know, I, I I tell my students and my viewers, no, we can't be basing. But but having someone like you coming out there, maybe you can you know, uh, counsel me on this. Wallahi, Sheikh. I mean, honestly, when, when you hear in both sides of the story, uh, you, you, have, you have to be inclined. You see the gut feeling. 
you have to be inclined that there's some type of conspiracy behind it, you know. <laughs> when, you, when you hear about this thing. I mean, I love us that, that, that um, you know, the virus, you know, it seems real, it's real, it's there, but, you know, it, it seems that, 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 that they're behind it. And they, what are their objectives, the you know, political objectives, the uh, economical objectives to, you know, recapture the economy, to make it a, a collapse, to rebuild it again. It's a sad situation, but it shows you what, you know, these people are willing to do. And it, we've seen examples all throughout history, you know, collateral damage, you know, where people pay the price in order for a certain, you know, elite or a certain group to gain. So I, I wouldn't put anything past them, honestly. But, <laughs> but, but also, we cannot base our action on these theories. We have to, I mean, we can think that, but we have to seek the means of protection for our health, right? I mean... Yeah. That's even, I even, made, I even made some videos about this, and I, I made a video, and some of the brothers took it. It was actually, just, cause I, my, my wife, she had a, you might hear the baby crying in the background. She, she was doing her, for her delivery, she was in the hospital. So we were outside, and I was filming some short videos. So subhanAllah, the, I said one of the most difficult things about the current situation is that we have to take information from any of the news agencies that we know have been lying to us for years. And now they're, they're like, <laughs> That's true. <laughs> we, know, we know they're liars, you know. And then, now they're telling us this is what's happening. So what do we do? But nonetheless, I said whether they're telling, you know, there, there's three possibilities. Either they're telling us the truth or they're lying to us or it's actually worse than what they're telling us. Uh -huh. So you know, whether it's this or that, we have to take any we have to take our precautions. That's what I think. Prepare ourselves. Yeah. And that's, that's why we say even now I go out and even here, like in my building, I go out, I put the mask on. But just just in case to be on the safe side, because any even if it is just like any a, a, a different type of the flu or this, and if people are dying from it, and if we cannot be from them, then inshallah, we're, we're going to try our best. Inshallah. Yeah, but because also I, I think uh, Sheikh Abdul Rahim, the matter also um, uh, becomes also a law in some countries, like in America now. We cannot have a congregation over 10 people. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, they, they could come and lock down your masjid if you actually violate that and, and all of this. And you, and, and then you, you look like you're trying to, uh, you know, uh, defy uh, the law of the land. And imagine a Muslim does that beside all this. Even, even though I'm, I'm receiving a lot of videos from people protesting in America, <laughs> uh, you know, people on the streets protesting and all of this about, you know, it's their right for movement and what have you. But... Uh, as Muslims, I think we, you know, the situation we've been through in America in the last ten years, we need to make always make sure that we're we play on the safe side. Yes. So, 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 yeah, here is my uh, first question, uh, and it's coming from uh, a sister by the name of Caroline Grace. Uh, she is saying, I don't know if you can see that on the picture or not, uh, but I will read uh, it for you. Cut off a bit on the side, so I can get yeah. some of it. Okay. Um, so basically, I'll read it for you. I'm an Irish Canadian that grew up Catholic and converted to Islam. Alhamdulillah. I have had uh, uh, to deal with many difficulties in different in difference of religion with my father, especially. And was wondering if you had any advice as to how to bridge the gap and show him the beauty uh, of Islam. Uh, did you get that or shall I uh, repeat this again? It's, it's clear. It's clear. Alhamdulillah. Right. Yeah, obviously, I mean, I mean, all families are different. I mean, obviously, I'm, a, I'm the same exact background, Irish, Catholic as well. So the, the, my, my family was a bit different. Uh, I think, you know, the, the jahili I had was a bit So when they saw the you know, good uh, you know, outcome that Islam had on me and, and how it became after Islam, I think they liked that. They might not have thought I would stay, you know, stay Muslim this long and been this serious about or dedicated to Islam. But alhamdulillah, I have a very good relationship with my family now. I think one of the key points that we all need to have, we need to follow obviously in the footsteps of the Sahaba as well and look at them as our role models. Because many of them face difficulties as well. And we tend to forget that the Sahaba, all of them were reverts as well. You know, they, except for the young yeah. ones who were born in Islam, but the, the majority of them were reverts. So they faced many of the things. And I, I think this is something as reverts, we need to look back on their stories. For example, the story of Sa'ad al Abu al-Qas with his mother who refused to eat and drink and you know, he said you did that she, that she will die if he doesn't leave his religion. And, and he said, if you would have 99 souls, each one of them comes out in front of me, I wouldn't leave my faith. And then she ended up eating and going back to her senses, right? The, the point is, is that these type of stances, we need to realize and make but, our families but, understand. But divine intervention came that was not accepted, right? Like the statement of Sa'd, we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
actually said that is not nice in in a way yani True, but the, 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 but the point re remains is this, this, this thing steadfast that we're not going to leave our religion obviously for them or to please them. So that, that is correct from this stance. But if, if, so you, the, the, if you think about it, uh, Brother Abdul Rahim, uh, you're the one who changed on, on you know, I'm, I'm trying to, to take on their, their, their role here on the conversation. You're the yeah. one who changed. They brought you up and they are the parents and you are mm -hmm. the child and you are the one who changed. That's how they look at you. And, you know, what is your take? But one, what, one thing doesn't change. In fact, I think and the, the beauty of Islam is it becomes more the, the being dutiful and being kind to your parents. This is something that, in, that increases. And some of us didn't have it before. And some of us did have it before. So the ones who didn't have it, they're going to see it. And the ones who didn't, uh, or the ones who did, they're going to see an increase in it. So they're going to see the, the beauty of Islam from that. How Islam teaches us to, to be towards them. So when she said the best way to represent Islam, it's always, it's always for us to, to implement Islam. This is the beauty of Islam. Always people ask me the best way to give da'wah. Act upon Islam. Be a true Muslim. And pe people will see the beauty of Islam in our actions. So this is the key thing for the sister, for all of us, is that we implement Islam and we stay firm. And, 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 we, and we show our, our relatives that we are very firm, very dedicated. Our religion comes first. But we also have love, a lot of love and affection for our family. And we're supportive of our family. There's certain things that we won't do, certain gatherings that we won't attend, obviously. But generally speaking, alhamdulillah, and he will support them and we're good to them. And I think when they see that most people, even if there's something, this is through experience, that through time, eventually they come around and it, they, it becomes easy for them yeah. to then deal yeah. with inshallah ta'ala. This is what we've seen most of the time. Anyway. Uh, what, what about, you know, how, how do you handle the uh, their holidays, uh, like Christmas and and and... Easter and these special days they have where families supposedly get together Well, I mean, I mean for, for us now, I mean they they know we don't attend and we don't take part in it So they've kind of it's kind of become an old thing it's, it's not really an issue for us anymore, but I can understand where this could be an issue in, in the beginning um, For me, I guess the, the birthday is still you know, my, my parents for some time. They kind of left it uh, But then they've, they've come back to it now where they like they send me on my birthday. Happy birthday, which uh, and alhamdulillah, and, but they know I don't celebrate it and things like that. And, uh, and my father, and I, I even told him a few years ago, and he, he was really happy on his birthday. And I told him, I said, you know, we don't celebrate, but I said, I know this day, I don't forget. Yeah. So just to he that, you know, even though I've changed, I know it's still your birthday. So and he, he really liked that, alhamdulillah. Yeah. But we know, we know we don't celebrate and they, they accept it. So it's just, I mean, it's a change of customs, but we still have a lot of other things they're involved in. A lot of other gatherings that they come over, we visit them, they visit us. So alhamdulillah, these things remain the same and they, and they, and they don't change. But these type of holidays, and we kind of just uh, you know, stay away from them and they understand it usually. And, and like I said, sometimes it takes time. Maybe the first three, four, five, ten years, they're, they're not going to get it. They're not going to support it. But eventually, alhamdulillah, most, most families come around and, and tend to respect it, inshallah. Alhamdulillah. Uh, the second question I, I have for you is, uh, you lived uh, for so many years. Uh, that is Abdul Qadr Al Albani, one of our uh, dear students here. Uh, in the Muslim land, do you advise the reverts to Islam to spend time in the Muslim lands in order to learn the deen and attain Islamic manners? Um, to be honest with you, it's a it's a bit of a, a two-edged sword. <laughs> <laughs> because there's there, there's a lot of good in Muslim lands, but it's not all it's cracked up to be. I think a lot of times. Can I, can I tell you something before you go on? Yeah. The other day, I was talking to a brother from Minnesota, and he came to visit Darul Tawheed, and he stayed behind. And I said, Sheikh, I went to Saudi Arabia as soon as I accepted Islam. I was about to leave Islam. The only decent Muslims I met were in the USA. I mean, just to show you that, but of course, this is cannot be generalized. Yani. I'm sure there are very decent brothers and sisters overseas as well. Yeah, please go ahead. Yeah, but there are, but I think a lot, even a lot of times, the, the cultural shocks that you'll find, and, and sometimes, like even some of the things that we faced in the University of Medina, I could tell you stories and other, you know, sheikhs in Medina, who are Medina graduates and are in America now, things that we faced that were, you know. And Allah made us patient, basically, we can say, alhamdulillah. We faced, we faced a lot of difficulties there. So the, the, this, the, the, the mentality, the mindset is so different. So you, the, these type of things can actually throw you off. And you can find that actually a lot of times practicing Islam in the West 
and the freedom we have in the West is much, much more. So, for example, if, if I'm going to come back home any, without any issues, I can have now a lecture in Dar al Recently, I was with the brothers in, in Sacramento. I did something with them online. I can do something in New Jersey. I don't need to get any permission from anybody to do it. And I can just have my freedom and, and, and lecture all around the U.S. with no problem, alhamdulillah. Whereas you have a lot of restraints in a lot of Muslim countries of uh, things you can't do and, and uh, can or can and can't do. So that this, is, um, this, is, this is very difficult. A lot of times you're very involved in the masjid, very involved in the da'wah, you come overseas. There is, you, there is more Islamophobia in the Muslim world than in the West. Yeah, unfortunately. Islamophobia so. towards the real religion, not the societal, cultural norms, religion. To be honest, even with dealing with the, with the non-Muslims, a lot of the non-Muslims have more respect for you and for your religion in the U.S. or in the U.K. in the West than you'll find in a lot of Muslim countries. And if, for for example, if you see if you if you come to uh, the U.S. or the U.K. and you're at you know the, the border control and your wife is a niqabi, you'll find that the respect they have for her is better than a lot of Muslim countries. Right. Even a lot, they'll bring over a woman without you even say anything. Or a Muslim country, they're like, why bring a woman? It's daror, it's necessity. It's like, no, you have a woman right there. She can come see her, you know? So this, the, the, so a lot of times the, the non-Muslims have even more respect. So, I mean, it's not, it's not all. You, you can benefit from both. And to be honest with you, I believe I've truly benefited a lot from both cultures. And in my time in the Arab world, and I benefited a lot from them. But also my, my culture from America. And as an American Muslim, I benefited a lot from it as well. So I think the combination is I good. Yeah, I always look at this uh, incident in the Sira, you know, the uh, truce of Al-Hudaybiyah, when, Suha- just, when, Suha- when, when Suhail ibn Amr, you know, came yeah. and, and he put that contract, and then his son came, throwing yeah. himself at the Muslims, and and now Rasulullah Sallallahu is big in Suhail, can you let this one go? He said, no, now you have to send your, uh, imagine anybody who is a Muslim now would have left Islam. You know, would have said, these guys are not even helping me. But, you know, subhanAllah, uh, a lot of people, unfortunately, they, they become dismayed with, with Islam because of the mistake that you, you judge the religion by the people, but you don't judge the haq uh, by the haq like they, uh, they say. Uh, uh, quite frankly, it's very trying. I, I tell anybody who want to go to the Middle East or the Muslim world, uh, and I, I tell Al Albani that as well, you have to strengthen your iman more than here. Otherwise, they will test you right and left. Uh, and I mean, to be honest, I don't really know any, any good place you could go now anyways. Before, there were some places like we go study Arabic and Quran in Egypt. That's not suitable now. Saudi Arabia, the issue of, of the visa, can you... Um, may, may, maybe, I mean, so I mean it's, just not, it's, not, it's not as easy as you, as you might think. And even, even some of the setups we have in, in America to learn the Quran and to learn this, you might even find that it's better than... And, he, and, and a lot of uh, Muslim countries, the system anyways, I mean, you'll find it in, yeah. or more in Muslim countries, but the system might be better in, at home. Uh, Brother Ismail has a very interesting question here, and, and this is a very common uh, thing. How to deal with the parents who are not practicing, who are non-practicing Muslims? Um, any, the, 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 same, the same approach. I think a lot of the times what I've seen throughout my uh, life in Islam with, you know, new practicing brothers and sisters who are from you know, this, this, this part of the world and he, or the ones who be, start practicing themselves in, in the West, a lot of times new practicing, they become a bit, bit harsh in their approach and they, they want their family to, to, to practice also a bit, bit tough with them. So I think we have to be, you know, we have, we have to be a bit softer in their approach. But at the same time, we have to stick, as they stick to our guns, stick to our principles, where we, we hold firm to our principles, we make it clear that we're not willing to compromise on our principles. But we're still dutiful to them. We're still kind to them. We still speak to them in a kind way. We still attend the gatherings where they're not doing things that are, that are, that are haram. Uh, we help them out in everything we can. We, we have the bir with them as, a, as Allah has ordered us to have, alhamdulillah. So with these type of things, and, and they'll see the, the, the beauty of Islam. And once again, they'll see the impact that Islam has on us and practicing Islam has on us. And that will have a good impact on this work. We have to be, you know, I think, more soft in our approach sometimes. Uh, I've seen a lot of the brothers when they start to practice, the, the, their approach is a bit too too harsh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's why we should hide away when we come back to the religion. You know, we uh, uh, the scholars, they advise us that when you come back to the deen, just stay by yourself for two years until you create that balance. Otherwise, you're, they're going to see you as an extremist. 
Uh, I have to post this uh, from Muhammad Ali. Uh, maybe you can tell him a couple of words. Uh, he said, uh, my Irish brother man, I have so much respect for you. Frankly, it is a good role model for our ki for my kids. Otherwise, they will test uh, you leaving uh, in martial arts. Uh, I, yeah. I, I think what is he trying to say is like using the martial art people. What do you say? I know maybe I, maybe he follows me. I, I do do some training. Okay. Uh, I'm not I'm not I'm not as good as I should be because I, all my traveling and lecturing and things like that. So I'm a bit any I'm consistent when I when I can be, but uh, unfortunately I, I kind of cut off a bit. So I, I started uh, uh, training martial arts and when I was in Ireland, uh, I think about three or four years ago. So I, I started with Japanese jiu jitsu, and then I moved over to doing MMA and. Um, and uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu as well, so I, I, I do, and, and now at home, and he, if the, even the brothers and sisters, they can watch, I did a video the other day about my daily routine, obviously it's changed in Ramadan, but from the morning I would get up and I would exercise, I have the Jiu-Jitsu mat, so I'd be doing some solo drills and things like this, wow. so I, I, I do train a bit of martial arts myself. I, I didn't know that part about you, now I am discovering you, more about you, inshallah, so, okay, we have, yeah, we have Khabib, uh, uh, that sounds like the the, the 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 fighter guy, Habib. Like, I, I, that's, it's, it's the exact same name. But I don't, I don't know. Uh, it, hopefully, that's not him. Is it him? <laughs> hopefully. Okay, in Ramadan. Hey, listen, Habib, we love you, man. I mean, if that's you, maybe you can let us know. But we love you. In Ramadan, he's saying we are encouraged to recite as many Quran as possible. But how do we incorporate the adhkar of the morning and evening as well as the Islamic studies? It, it goes back to the to the balance. You have to space out your time. There's enough there's enough time in the day. There's a lot of time. The priority goes to the Quran. Even I have a video I put on my YouTube channel the other day about do we focus on quality or quantity of the Quran? So that, that when it comes to the Quran, and it, and I say we focus on both in Ramadan. So we try to because we want to put more time and more focus on the Quran, just as the Prophet ﷺ did, and just as uh, the, the scholars after him, all of them did throughout history. The, the more focus comes on the Quran. So, but that doesn't mean that we have to just focus on getting as many khatmas as possible. Maybe we can put a goal for ourselves. We're going to have two khatmas, three khatmas, but also we're going to have some type of tafsir that we're going to read. And it doesn't have to be the whole Quran. It can be a tafsir of certain jizus. It can be a certain reading. And for example, if, I, if my Arabic is not that strong, I would read in my uh, my, my language, whether it be um, you know uh, you know in English or if this is the real Khabib, it'd be in Dagestani language for for him. Huh? Where he, where he would uh, read in that language as well, because that makes your understanding better of the Quran. So you have you make that balance, and then the adhkar of the morning and the evening, then uh, that doesn't stop. That's normal. Just like you would do it outside of Ramadan, you have to have that that spiritual time in the morning. And I put that on my daily schedule in the video the other day. You have to have that you know the daily dose of your dhikr in the morning of the adhkar. It takes about fifteen minutes probably to finish most of them adhkar sabah and also the masa. So this stays the same in Ramadan. And you, and uh, then the issue of Islamic studies. Take out some time to learn the fiqh of Ramadan, halal and haram of Ramadan, the do's and don'ts. And also, and it's a good time because in the, the nafs, when you're doing all of these good deeds, it makes you want to focus more. So I, I like to focus a lot of times on the seerah. I'm, I'm giving a lesson now about the Shemal al muhammadiyah I started now uh, giving those live lessons as well on my on my uh, Facebook page. So this is different things you can be doing and you can, you can make that balance because the more, more focus is going to be on these things in Ramadan. So there's enough time for all of it, inshallah. Yeah, I, I always advise, uh, you know, beside the adhkar, like you mentioned, that's uh, important to get in the habit of doing them, uh, is to focus more maybe on, on the understanding, like the, uh, you know, the tafsir, some of the tafsir, and that would compensate the Islamic studies. Uh, yeah. But again, that takes some time, somebody who is already prepared. Uh, we always get this question. This is a classical question, and, and I'm going to have to ask you. What is the ruling, I guess that's what he meant, that is Brother Bilal, uh, on living in a non-Muslim land? Um, you know, I, I have my take on this, but uh, I, we want to hear you. They, they know what I, I think. Yeah, I, mean, I, th I think, you know, the, our scholars made it clear that, you know, it's permissible if you can make, you know, any, uh, you can establish your religion or the basic fundamentals of your religion, you can establish them. Yeah. And as we mentioned just a bit ago, the reality is that we have more religious freedom in a lot of Western countries than you do in a lot of Muslim countries. Absolutely. So, yeah. What is the what is the what is the criteria? You know, would you rather you know travel to a lot, a lot of Muslim countries, or would you rather travel to 
not to get into political country and mentioning any names, but some of the Muslim countries, if you enter into the airport there, I mean, Allah must die, you know, it is, it is, it is, it is, like you lose all your freedom just as soon as you step off the plane, you know. So, I mean, what... Uh, they what asked, I, they yeah. asked me, who is your sheikh? Hey. I said, milk sheikh. Hey, alhamdulillah. <laughs> <laughs> As your sheikh. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you have to be welcomed in, uh, in some Muslim Stro- countries, you know. Strawberry or vanilla, huh? <laughs> Strawberry or vanilla, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, alhamdulillah, I mean, I, I, so, I mean we, we have the religious the religious freedom, so inshallah, inshallah. It's any, and, and then, in, you know, I think uh, da'wah-wise, as long as we're establishing our religion, we're practicing our religion, I mean, we're representing our religion in a, in a positive way, this is the key thing we need to focus on, you know. And, and, and so many people have, have, have thought, you know, making hijrah and going abroad is going to be better. But we always tell them, you know, the, the expression, how the expression goes, the grass is not always greener on the other side. You think it's going to be when you go to there, you get, you get the shock of a lifetime. So basically the measurement, the sensor is, are you able to practice your religion openly? Are That's you it. protecting Islam in your family? Those you're responsible for? Stay where you are and complement this with giving da'wah and that's my position giving, giving, on this giving da'wah and, and building and then one of the problems that we're facing in in the west in general is the first generation who live whether it be in america or in in europe is that they're living with one foot in one foot out right so in the, the mentality is back home mentality and the mentality is i'm going to make hijra and go back home But usually most of them never do, unless they go in the taboo, they go in the coffin back home. They go you know? back, no, they do, but for one month, and they can handle and that, it, and they run back here again. And, and, and if, even if they come back, their kids can never handle it there. Right. So right. This, this is the thing, you know. Yeah. I, I, I remember um, one of my uh, my close friends from the UK, uh, he grew up in the UK, born from the UK, got married from the UK, a revert sister, and he's originally from Pakistan. So I, I, I noticed he never goes back. So I asked him, and I know a lot of the Pakistani brothers, they go back and they like it. So I asked him, I said, why don't you go back? And he said, no, I've been back. He said, I went once for two weeks. He said, I canceled the trip halfway through. He said, it was my first time, my last time. He said, I'll never go back, you know. Yeah. He said, for me, he said, I'm, I'm British. This is where I came. He's a very good practicing brother, very active at the Dawah. But he said, you know, I can't handle that world. Other brothers go there, they like it, but he didn't. Yeah. So then, even the brothers who like it, most of them couldn't handle living there. And the same thing, you know, ones who grew up from Egypt or from ones who come from Morocco, wherever it might be. You know, they might go back for some visits and love it, you know, but to live there, you know, you know, they wouldn't. I'm an Egyptian and uh, I have my uh, clan there. For me to give a talk in a masjid, I have to get a permission from the, uh, you know, the uh, government. Uh, in Egypt. Over here, you can go to the park and, I mean, they're going to think you're crazy, but you can give that one, right? I mean, <laughs> if you're looking for the reward, that's good Instead enough. Of the middle of the loudspeaker, no, <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have Sister uh, uh, Um Adan. I'm an American who was born Muslim. Due to my environment, I had no knowledge of Islam. What happens to someone who has a sinful past but now wants to follow Islam? Could they be forgiven? Alhamdulillah. I mean, w- whether you had a past and built on knowledge or not knowledge, if you were someone who was astray, And then wants to come back, Alhamdulillah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as he told us, in Allah yaghfiru dhanuba jami'a. Allah forgives all of the sins, Alhamdulillah. So the, and it, it does, regardless of the background, if you repent and you come back to Allah, Allah will forgive you. But the fact that you were ignorant or didn't know, then you have more of an excuse than someone who had knowledge. That's the difference there. But the, the doors of repentance are open in either or, whether you were someone who had knowledge of what you were doing or not. But if you're excused, then maybe Allah will, in a, will forgive you anyways for all of the sins, inshallah ta'ala, if you truly repent. Oh. But you had an excuse on top of that. You had an excuse if you were someone who was from an environment where Islam wasn't practiced or you didn't know much about Islam, inshallah. Yeah, I, you know, uh, you know the hadith, Anas, uh, if your sins pile up to the heaven, yeah, there is always a chance. You can have, you know, uh, A better chance than that. Okay, is it permissible to say Ramadan Kareem? Uh, of course, they some people say that. Uh, I answer them by saying Ramadan Kareem Abu Zaid. <laughs> <laughs> But is it permissible to say Ramadan Kareem? <laughs> well, okay, I mean, many of the scholars mentioned that it's, it's not correct. Is that you say right. should say Ramadan Mubarak? Right. I mean, I, I I personally don't see that big of a, of a deal with it. I think it's a, it's a Intention is good, but Allah, I mean, it's not something 
Ramadan Mubarak is probably the better of the two, obviously. But um, Allah knows best. What is, what is your take on it, Sheikh? Anyway. Well, uh, the hadith in Sunan al-Tirmidhi, when uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam announced the coming of the month, he said, Atakum shahr Ramadan shahr mubarak So he used that. Uh, I think that's the basis on which uh, a lot of the scholars, they would say, uh, rather stick to the sunnah, but I will not, you know, uh, like rebuke somebody who tells me Ramadan. I mean, I'm not going to say that. <laughs> you know, this is where you have to leverage. Uh, you know, when I, what, what do you want to? What, what, do you want to talk to this brother again or not? You know, do you want to give him da'wah again or not? <laughs> I mean, yeah, you know, you know, I I love uh, one of the things that I love uh, about uh, your uh, work. Uh, uh, lately, uh, I really, I really, you cannot imagine. I mean, I, I really admired uh, your thoughts so much because uh, I'm a soccer fan. And uh, when Muhammad Salah came with that picture and, yeah. and used that beautiful parable of Abdullah ibn Himar, uh, that, that was, you know, uh, that, that was very thoughtful of you. I, I thought this was very... Uh, you know, deep. Uh, you know, I love I love brothers who go into the try to connect. Maybe you can talk to us about this, please. Yeah, I'm there. That's uh, I, I saw the picture and I saw that he was uh, under attack. So uh, some, some people may know who is Mo Salah is. Muhammad Salah is a, a Liverpool mm -hmm. Egyptian player. He's like he's one of the he's like LeBron James to the soccer world. Yeah, he's, he's a celebrity yeah. now, and and he's a Muslim, somebody who 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 talks about Islam and presents Islam. So when, when I when, when I first saw the picture, um, immediately in my mind I remember the picture of him reading the Quran. I remember the picture of him walking in with his team as he's holding the Quran. I remember the pictures that we used to post of him making dua. All of these good things. And okay, so now I said I, I said maybe it was in a public place. I looked at the picture. Him and his family they were barefoot, so apparently it's in his house or in someone else's house. Maybe I don't know. But the point was is that nonetheless. And he, this is a mistake, if this is where the case, if it was in his house, it's a mistake. But any the, the, the quote that we mentioned, any don't don't any help shaitan against your brother. Do no. not help shaitan. So I mentioned that quote that we need to to stay away from you know helping shaitan because someone who has all of this good, yeah, let's make an other for it. Okay, he made a mistake, he made a mistake, but don't go out and spread his sin and make his sin look worse because that can, that can push him away. He sees the Muslims, the practicing Muslims, especially they who are, you know, refuting him, exploiting him. Yeah. Then it might make him, you know, farther away from Islam. And, and being in, in a society like he's in as a celebrity, they, they face a lot of fitna. It's not easy to stay firm on the deen and that type of thing. So you want to bring him closer and not push him away. So yeah, that's that's beautiful. Very thoughtful. Yeah. I, I really liked it, not because I like Salah and I like soccer. It's, it's you know, I think we need to, to be more of... of callers to the path than judgmental you know in, in the sense of uh, like you said you know that he might he may he may even doesn't know like in, in Egypt you know be, people who are celebrity they have a, a Christmas tree behind them and, and you know he's not educated in the field of, uh, of Islam Tayyip, uh, go ahead. even something interesting if you look I, I did a video some time back it's on my YouTube channel back to Khabib we had the message earlier yeah and it, it it was 54 things. I did a khutbah about it, that we benefit from his life and from it, some of his stances, from the things he said. And I said at the beginning of the khutbah, I said, I know right away brothers are going to say, but he does fighting, hitting the face, hitting the face is haram. And I said, look, I said, we're not going to get into that. That's between him and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He knows the ruling. I said, but there are beneficial things we can benefit from his life, beneficial things that he said, stances that he's made. And I said, this is what I want to discuss today. So that's what I looked into and benefiting from the positive and not, you know, just focusing on, you know, and you five percent negative, and you leave the ninety-five percent positive that someone has. Because your intention is to better the person, is not to just doom them and and just you know. Uh, okay, uh, we have Um Barak Barak Um Barak Umma Barak. I don't know what that means. Uh, Salam Sheikh. Uh, I didn't I didn't breastfeed my kids as I didn't feel comfortable. I recently found out this was a sin. Is there any way? to repent for that? Um, I don't know that it's a sin, but I know it's an ikhilaf al-awla. It's not something, a no. good thing to do. This, no. is, this is the right of the kid, and this is any, it's even been proven uh, that it, 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 there's, it creates a, a special bond between the mother and between 
the, the child. Also, the, the nourishment that he gets from the, the, the breast milk, there's nothing else that can replace that. So, I mean, it, it was a mistake that, that, that you made, obviously. And, you know, I just ask for it as too far. But I, mean, I don't know that it would fall into being sinful that you had committed haram. And this is something as well that don't forget that it's become like nature now or custom now where people, it's the thing to do where you give your kid a bottle and you're, you're busy, you have a career. I don't know your situation, but, you know, this, this is what happens all around the world now. So it's become the thing that many mothers do not even thinking about it, not even realizing the, the benefits for herself and for her child, the, the bond that it's creating and that, that the strong health and the, for his immune system, all of the things that he's missing out on if he's not breastfed. So inshallah, inshallah, if you have another kid, inshallah, you know for the future, not to do it, inshallah. No. Uh, so uh, we have Naif here. He's saying, I got a question. So would we consider someone passes away from COVID-19 as someone who passed away from a plague? I think that's what he meant, not acute. Haji. Because I saw two responses from Dr. Bilal and Sheikh Asim. Uh, is the question well, really? I, I think here is the the area of this of this question, uh, uh, Sheikh Abdul Rahim. Uh, we come to this argument that Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in an authentic hadith that the Ta'un la yadkhul al Madina. The Ta'un, the plague, will not enter Medina. And at the same time, we're saying that this is uh, the COVID nineteen is a Ta'un. Um, and meanwhile, it entered Medina. Now, now we respond by saying that is not ta'un; that's a virus. Yeah. So now, what is the ruling on those who die from that virus? Will the hadith, uh, whoever stays in his house and dies because of the ta'un, is a martyr, apply to him or her? That's the question. Uh, I, I think it is applied. I mean, there is a, a, apparently a difference between a, a plague and a virus. So there's a difference there. That is true. But nonetheless, the, the same type of rulings and the same type of, if you, you know, to make the qiyas or the analogy, on it, 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 it falls into the same thing. It's the same type of thing. It's very similar to the plague, even if it's a bit different. And the same rulings now of having to isolate yourself and doing this, we're actually, what they're telling us to do, we're actually following the sunnah to a T now. So yes. Exactly what yes. they're told to do. So this is something, inshallah ta'ala, that I believe, inshallah. And always you put your hope in it. I don't know, don't close the doors, you know, the doors that people sometimes want to make it difficult to get the Jannah. Inshallah, we have high hopes, inshallah, ta'ala, that the people I, don't I, fall I, under this, inshallah. The, the way that I, I look at this, uh, Sheikh Abdul Rahim, is, uh, you know, we living cannot determine who is a shaheed and who is not a shaheed. We, exactly. we don't do that, because the moment that you say that, you're saying this person is going to Jannah, basically. So we say, nahsabuhu, but like you mentioned, uh, that... All the restrictions, the all the uh, complications, all the difficulty of a ta'un, we're living it. So we hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give us uh, the reward. I think that's uh, beautifully uh, uh, worded. Jazakallahu uh, khaira. I, I warned you, I'm going to ask you this question and, and, and you're going to have to tell me what you think. And I'm sorry this fatwa is coming from where you are right now. I'm going to let you disclose your location. I don't want to say where you are. It's not like you're in a bad place or something. You're in Turkey. I mean, that's a beautiful country. Uh, the virtual Jumu'ah. And we, what we mean by a virtual Jumu'ah? Because some people may assume we're talking about an imam reminding the people and warning them before the Jumu'ah that guys pray Dhuhr. This is not a Jumu'ah. But we're talking about somebody leading a Salah in the Masjid and the people six, seven, eight, ten miles away, or even uh, thousands of miles away, because they like his voice, they will follow him in salah. So they have the TV or the thing in front of them, and he becomes their imam. What is your take on this? And don't be political, please. I know that you, you're never political. All right. <laughs> Actually, I did a video. It's on my YouTube channel. Uh, ten things. Tarawih in lockdown, it's called. Tarawih in lockdown. Ten things you need to know. So this was number three. And actually, when I was saying it, I actually kind of laughed because I said, you, you wouldn't think someone actually would say this. And when I first started to hear it. I heard it a few times here, a few times there. I was like, is, is someone actually giving a fatwa about this? I, I didn't think it was real. I thought it was like a joke, you know. Or I thought it would be someone who had nothing to do with Islam who would be saying this, you know. Like some, you know, moved under the bridge or someone just, you know, thought it's a good idea the, the, the modern day and how advanced technology is. Bismillah, all of us can be at home and pray in Mecca or something, you know. I, I thought it was a joke, honestly. But then and to hear that a, a scholar who is someone who is someone of knowledge, not someone, you know, he's not someone who is, who is, who is he has, he's someone who's very, very knowledgeable uh, that would say something like this. 
But it's part of this, and he, no doubt it's not acceptable. The scholars made it very clear, and he, you have to be in the same place. So if, you, if you're in a masjid, for example, the example they give, if, if you're on the roof of the haram and you can't see the imam, but you can hear them, and in and, and, and this situation, okay, that's, that's acceptable. If you're like the, in the women's section or we're in one of the sections of the masjid, like we have a lot of times in the West, we have different rooms in the different Islamic centers or sometimes houses, and, and, and you're in the same area, but you can't see and you're, and you're somewhat connected to the imam, there's no problem here. This is okay. Even if you were, example, let's say we're in, and we have two buildings in our place in, in, uh, in, in Colorado, for example. We have a building in the front and a building in the back. Okay, those are pretty much connected. But I can't say that if I'm, you know, I'm tuning in to Dar al Tawheed and I'm, uh, you know, five blocks away or, or, or five miles away that, you know, I'm praying with Imam Kareem during Tarawih. This is not something, and even logically, you wouldn't accept it. And the, and the scholars mentioned this a long time ago. You have to be in the same place and the Safuf, they have to be Mutasira. The, the lines, they have to be connected. And if there's a small, you know, gap between them or a small building, but you're connected through the microphone or something like that, then that's, that's not a problem, inshallah. But the, uh, when, you, when it's something that's mubalik, uh, you, you go to extremes of when the distance, it's not, not going to be accepted. But so when I, saw, I was thinking about this earlier, that when someone of this caliber makes a fatwa like this, it's actually a blessing. It's actually a blessing. Why? Because it's a reminder to us that no one is perfect. No, no. no. And, and I remember one of the, the great sheikhs who taught us, and he was really high-powered in his knowledge, and I remember I was in the first year in the University of Medina and we were walking out of the Haram and we were asking questions. And I always had Husn al because I'd see him from far away. He had a small beard like on his chin here. And it seemed that he didn't have hair here. But when I noticed and I looked close, I noticed that he did have a bit of hair and he would shave it. So it, when I saw that, it, it broke my heart. You know, I was like, oh, God, this, you know, the Sheikh had shaved part of his face. And for me, I, but then I thought about it later and I said, that, that just shows you that no one's perfect. Even this guy was very high powered and he's giving us knowledge from the Quran, from the Sunnah, very good in, in fiqh, but, and he had a shortcoming in, in that issue, and may Allah forgive us and forgive him, uh, but it shows that no one's perfect, no, no one's, everyone makes mistakes, so alhamdulillah and he, I know that you had a long night, uh, you had actually a broadcast earlier, and it's too late now in, in Turkey, you want to get some uh, did you have your suhoor yet? No, no, we still have like three, three and a half hours to go I have to pray tarawih, inshallah, now, oh, inshallah. you haven't prayed tarawih yet, so we have seven more minutes yeah. Inshallah. Uh, exactly, inshallah. So this way, uh, you know that there is an uh, there is a light at the end of the tunnel, inshallah. <laughs> uh, but uh, I have three questions, uh, so you have to balance your time here. Uh, I have a brother who just accepted Islam just uh, maybe three four days before Ramadan. His name is Jim. I asked him to call you. He's I think he's he's more of a Dutch uh, Holland from Holland. I mean, he lives in the the states. Uh, can you give him an advice that he is a new Muslim who just accepted Islam a couple of days before Ramadan and you know he can't even be with the congregation and, and, and what advice do you give to him to to so, so, subhanallah the um, you just reminded me I was the advice I was about to give and I forgot you know we can't be with the congregation subhanallah because it's one of the great yeah. things yeah that, that really helped me I became Muslim two weeks before Ramadan and you know being with the Muslims and seeing you know, how the Muslims were in Ramadan it was really, really good, alhamdulillah. But I mean, I think obviously he needs, and he, even online, there's a lot of things you can do to be involved with the community. And yeah, I was looking at the things on YouTube today, all of the videos that are coming out, and the mashayikh, everybody's very, very active on Facebook, on YouTube. So there's a lot of things he can do online to learn, have a, a direct relationship with the local community. That's, that's what keeps you strong, again, is, is your brothers in the beginning of the, uh, any, the conversion or that, that, that stage. So he needs to make sure, even if it's the, with the, the, you know, online, what's up, uh, you know, through the telephone, that he, he stays in contact and the brothers stay in contact with him and he tries to learn something new. Because the, the real beauty of Islam, you're not going to really gain it until you learn, you learn more about your religion. The more you learn about your religion, the more you learn about Allah, the, that's the, the stronger your faith is going to become, inshallah, the more you're going to benefit from your faith. So no doubt he became Muslim in a, uh, in, in a perfect time, but a... You know, a horrible time at the same time. A lot of time. Yeah. Oh, mashallah, he's very positive. I, I talk to him all the time. He's stay, and... stay positive. Yeah. 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 Okay, the, uh, the second question, the sister is asking about a kafara. I guess the kafara, I mean, she kind of broke her question into two pieces. Can she give it to 10 poor people? Uh, actually, a brother whose name is Omar. I'm sorry, uh, Omar, I, I said a sister. Is it permissible to give the expiation kafara in form of cash for 10 people? Uh, poor people. 
هو الاطعام ولا يعني اي دونت نو وات از يور تيك اون ذا شيف ان شاء الله If that's the way he's going to be giving the itam, he gives it to them. Allah alam mana dia gives it to them. And it's supposed to be in food, right? Yeah. Well, basically, itam wa ashrati masakina min awsat ma tutaimun ahliyukum, aw kiswatuhum, aw tahriru raqaba. فمن لم يجد فصيام ثلاثة أيام فالإطعام يعني أولا يفيد دم. This is important that people realize as well because a lot of times what he's doing is correct. Because it's O O O, and then if you don't, you can't do any of the above three. Then you, you go to the CM. Because many people they go to the CM right away before going to these three. So inshallah, I mean, I, I, I think it, it's better. This, he gives them in, in, in food. Right. Because even in, in the things before live times, sometimes the poor people they don't use it for for food. You give it to them, so they, that, that that goes away from the time. So you get, you feed them, and you can either feed them a meal or you can give them you know dry food that would be good for them, and that and it is is more beneficial inshallah that they'll have that with them. For some time in Shantan, so we wouldn't go to cash in that. Alhamdulillah, I think the the last question is is a piece of cake because I think you're gonna uh, you know practice what you preach uh, <laughs> right now because you said you you haven't prayed tarawih yet and here here is the I think you the answer is practical you're gonna pray tarawih after the show and that's uh, but it's not called tarawih then it's called tahajjud right because. Yeah. Tarawih is is in the masjid, um, you know, uh, after Isha directly, but uh, it could be called tahajjud as well. It could be could be called qiyam. Yeah, but, uh, that's the question. The last question. <laughs> I mean, the, the the qiyam of the Prophet ﷺ, he he did it through in all parts of the night. He did it immediately after Isha. He did it in the in the middle of the night, and he did it to the last third of the night. And he would focus more on the last third of the night. Obviously, tonight because I had a live program in the UK, and then once I finished. I had about an hour until this one, so I didn't want to rush myself in in the in the tahajjud or uh, so I, I said I'll delay until after the show inshallah. So anytime, gonna, whatever is more. We're gonna let you go uh, with one condition, uh, two conditions actually, that you make dua for us, uh, that Allah yeah. Subhanahu wa Taala keep us steadfast, and uh, the second condition that you will virtually come back uh, to our broadcast again and physically come visit us at CMC oh, yeah, yeah. uh, Darul Tawheed. You're going to enjoy the community here, inshallah. Uh, we'll find the Rocky Mountains in, in Riyadh, inshallah. <laughs> inshallah. Jazakallah khair, Abdul Rahim. And uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect you and your family, keep you steadfast. And uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, make a lot of people benefit from you, Rabbil Alameen. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, gather us always uh, in his path of obedience uh, and abund the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa uh, I love you for the sake of Allah my brother and uh, stay safe uh, and uh, hopefully if I don't see you again in this world I will see you in Jannah inshallah Jazakallah khair Abdul Rahim Assalamu alaykum Alaykum Assalamu alaykum Okay, brothers and sisters in Islam, that's it. That our special guest, he was live with us. You know, he was live with us. Alhamdulillah. Jazakallah khair, Sheikh Abdul Rahim. Brothers and sisters in Islam, please don't forget to like our Facebook page, Imam Karim Abu Zaid. Don't forget also to like the to subscribe to the YouTube channel. This is how we're gonna get more people. Inshallah, we're gonna try every Saturday to have a special guest for you. Inshallah. Uh, also, uh, help us out uh, if you can uh, with, uh, you know, uh, financials, if you're able to, inshallah, brothers and sisters in Islam. Jazakumullah uh, khaira, and I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow, inshallah, at 5 o'clock uh, Mountain Standard Time. We're back to our original time, and tomorrow we have a short presentation on uh, Know Your Messenger series, followed with question and answer, inshallah. And I think the Skype uh, should be working. Uh, we tested it already. And uh, Sheikh Abdul Rahim uh, was actually live on Skype. Jazakumullah uh, khaira. Have a blessed day. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.